We all know that uncertainty is one of the hindrances that gets in the way of concentration. We know it both from hearing it in the texts or reading it in the texts, from hearing it in Dharma talks, and also from our own experience. If you find yourself wondering, is this really the right meditation for me? Is the Dharma really right? Did the Buddha know what he was talking about? Those thoughts can really get in the way of the mind settling down. But it's interesting to note that the Buddha's solution for uncertainty is not just to ramp up your conviction, saying, I believe, I believe, I believe, and somehow hoping that that's going to drive your uncertainty away. His solution is not to stop asking questions, but to ask different questions, questions you can actually answer. Just try to look at what in your mind is skillful, what's unskillful. Try to notice the qualities that lead to skillful action and unskillful action. You can start by asking those questions about your breath. What way of breathing feels good? What way of breathing doesn't feel good? You pose that question in your mind. And then you experiment with different kinds of breathing. And you start noticing that certain rhythms of breathing or certain ways of conceiving the breath feel better than others. Then you ask yourself, how can you maintain those ways of breathing? And how can you ride with the waves of change that go through your body? Because sometimes a particular rhythm will feel good for a while, and then after a while the body doesn't need that rhythm anymore. It needs a different rhythm. How do you sense that? It's like riding a surfboard. How do you sense shifts in the wave so you can stay balanced? You can maintain that sense of ease. How do you spread it through the body? Again, this involves how do you conceive of the breath energy in the body? What's actually happening when you breathe in? How does this breath energy flow? And when John Lee talks about breath energy, exactly what is he talking about? How can you sense the breath in your own body? And how do you let comfortable energy spread? What way of forcing it through the body actually makes it uncomfortable? And what way of forcing it through actually works? Do you need to use force? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And how do you learn to read the signs? of what's working and what's not working. These questions are helpful. They help you to read what's actually going on, and they overcome your uncertainty because you begin to gain evidence of your own, what works and what doesn't. You start looking at how the breath affects the mind, what kind of breathing goes along with unskillful mental states and what kind of breathing goes along with skillful ones. And here you look for cause and effect going in both directions. Some mental states will come and they'll bring a catch in the breath or a tightness in the breath or a blockage in the breath energy in different parts of the body. 
and other times you'll find that certain ways of breathing aggravate unskillful mental states. And so the question is, how do you cut through those feedback loops? How do you breathe in a way that helps to nourish skillful mental states? So notice the, the solution to uncertainty here isn't coming into the meditation armed with lots of answers. You come to the meditation armed with the right questions. Questions that focus your attention on what you can actually see happening right here and now in terms of cause and effect. And that's how you overcome your uncertainty. You know from experience this works, that doesn't work. You learn to evaluate things on your own. So the questions direct your thoughts in the right direction, and then you watch and evaluate. This is how you get the mind into the first jhana. Not by pretending that there's uncertainty. Excuse me. <coughs> Not by pretending that there's no uncertainty. But realizing that you don't know, and you're going to learn. And realizing also that the way you're going to learn is learning to look right here, see what's happening. So there is a certain amount of conviction that has to come into play here, the conviction that you can learn from what's actually happening in your own body and mind, <laughs> that you have the powers of observation that are necessary. And the conviction that right here is where you're going to learn about these things. You don't have to depend on some text or some god or some outside being who's going to tell you what to do. You learn from your own actions. So it is true that a certain amount of conviction is needed here, but it's coupled with this inquisitive mind. It's not the kind of conviction of faith that refuses to ask questions or refuses to entertain. Questioning mind, mindset. It's one that realizes the only way you're going to gain knowledge is by asking the right questions. This, as the Buddha said, is how the Dharma becomes visible here and now. Someone once asked him, what does it mean, visible here and now? And the Buddha says, well, do you know in your mind when passion has not been abandoned? Yes. Okay, there it is. The Dharma is visible here and now. And do you know when passion is abandoned? Well, you would know if you practiced. And the same with aversion and delusion. You know for yourself when you're, these things are present, when they're absent. And you know what you've done to bring them on. You know what you've done to get rid of them. So again, seeing the Dharma here and now is a question of noticing your actions and the result of those actions. This principle applies all, all through the practice beginning with the Buddha's teachings to Rahula. Look at your intentions. Do you know when you have a skillful intention? In the beginning you know to a certain extent, but there may be some delusion, so you have to keep watching your actual actions. If you know that an intention is unskillful, you don't act on it. If you're not quite sure, go ahead and act on it and see what happens. Then you learn from the results, both while you're doing the action and after it's done. And as you stick with this, you begin to read your mind states more and more clearly. So you can know when a particular mind state is going to lead to an unskillful action, so you drop it. You get a better and better sense of when the mind states are skillful. It's by looking at things in terms of action and result that you overcome your uncertainty. 
and that your knowledge becomes more and more firm. That's process of directing your thought in the right directions, asking the right questions, and evaluating what you're actually experiencing. This brings the mind to greater and greater peace and stillness. The same principle applies all the way through those questions that the Buddha asks people on the verge of being arahants. You see form, feeling, perception, fabrications, consciousness. You ask yourself, are these things constant? Well, no. And the Buddha here is not asking in the abstract. He's asking you to look. Look at your sense of form, your sense of the body that you're experiencing right here as you're sitting here. Look at the feelings that arise and pass away, the perceptions, fabrications, sensory consciousness. Do they last or not? Do they change or not? If they're changing, then the next question is, can you find happiness in what's changing like this? What's so unstable? Well, no. And then the conclusion with regard to questions of self and not self. Notice he doesn't come to the conclusion, therefore you conclude that there is no self. What you conclude is, the question is, is it fitting to regard these things as self, as, you, as what you are? what your self is. In other words, he's asking you, is that action of regarding these things in this way, is that a skillful action? And the answer is no, so you stop doing it. And as we all know, it's not easy to stop doing it, but that's what you learn how to do when you finally get to the point where it really is, hits home, that you've been placing your happiness in these things, or trying to base your happiness on these things that shift around and change on you. And then you realize that the activity of labeling that as self is an unskillful activity, something you've got to learn how to stop. And that's it. It's a question of actions and results, not trying to come to some conclusion about is there a self or is there no self, but simply the question of regarding this particular activity as you or yours, or what you are, or what yourself is. That activity, you can see clearly, is not skillful. And when the conditions come together just right, you can really stop it, and that's where awakening comes. So notice it's questions all the way to the end. It's not blind trust or blind conviction, blind faith. The trust is in the questioning process. And in your, own, in your own ability to look at your own actions and see the results. In the beginning it may be kind of blurry, but you learn to perfect your powers of observation. The more truthful you are, the more observant, the better the results. This is why the Buddha said, let a person come who is truthful and observant, I'll teach that person the Dharma. He's not saying, let a person come who believes everything I say, let a person who would admit his doubts. A truthful and observant person has to know how to question. And what the Buddha is going to teach you is how to ask the right questions at the right time and the right place. in such a way that actually leads to knowledge. And you can question your way to that first experience of the deathless, when you let go of your attachments to things. You let go of the activity of creating a self around these things for the first time. And the deathless opens up. The Buddha says that's when your conviction, <clears throat> when your conviction becomes verified. See that this process really does work. Up 
to that point, of course there are going to be doubts, and of course there are going to be questions. And the Buddha doesn't have you deny those doubts or deny those questions. He simply says, learn how to question in a way that's productive, that leads to knowledge, that allows you to verify for yourself what he's taught. So this is why the solution to uncertainty is not just blind conviction or forceful conviction. It's learning how to pay appropriate attention to what's skillful and what's unskillful in your own behavior. And then pursuing that line of questioning as far as it can go. Mm -hmm.